Hello Leica fans, would you like to shoot your street photos with the same lens as the famous Gary Winogrand? Today we are looking at the vintage Canon 28mm f2.8 LTM lens. If you love the 28mm focal length and you shoot either Leica M out or Leica screw mount, this video is definitely for you. I'm going to cover the details on the lens, the character of the lens, example photos shot in Warsaw, portraits shot with the Canon 28mm, then stay with me until the end and I'll show you vintage 28mm lens alternatives. And as a bonus, if you stay right until the very end, I will share also the Canon 25mm f3.5. That lens is an absolute gem. Okay, let's jump into the video. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. The Canon 28 f2.8 was the second 28mm lens from Canon. The first one was the Serena 28 3.5, released in the early 1950s, and then in the late 1950s, they released the 2.8. Some years later, they also released another 3.8, which is said to be the best of the bunch, but we'll maybe cover that at the end. The design of this lens is six elements in four groups with six aperture blades. It has a 40mm filter size, but will accept 39 pinch caps, as you can see here. It has a minimum focus distance of one meter, an infinity lock, a clicky aperture and a recessed lens design. There were said to be around 10,000 copies of the LTM lens made in 2.8, but there were also a few made in Contax RF and Nikon S mount. If you've got one of those, definitely hang on to it. It's probably worth a few pennies. The size of this lens is absolutely tiny and it really suits the smaller Leica Barnack cameras, but will also fit nicely on any Leica M camera. This lens weighs 160 grams or 5.64 ounces. And what about the couch of this lens? Sharpness, this lens is sharp in the center, even wide open at f2.8, despite popular belief. Prove that see my comparison video on the various 28mm lenses, and it compared very favorably to Voigtlander 28mm Ultron and lenses like the Leica Elmrit f2.8 spherical in the center. As soon as you go away from the center, things start to fall off rapidly and you do have very blurry edges at 2.8. But if you stop the lens down to f4 and then 5.6 and then f8, you'll see gradual improvements to the mid to edge sharpness. On film, I think you're probably one stop better than on digital from maybe my experience. I just seem to get sharper edges on film than I do on digital. And then I also shoot this on a crop sensor like a CL camera and I can probably shoot that at f4 and be happy with the edge sharpness. And what about vignetting? Yes, this lens does vignette really heavily, wide open at 2.8, and it does reduce as you stop down, but if you don't like vignetting, this does have more fall off than many lenses, wide open at 2.8. The colors of this lens are a bit muted compared to maybe modern lenses, because of the lower contrast. I'd say contrast is probably medium. And so because of that, the colors are a bit more pastely or flatter looking. Tones are warmer than Leica lenses. Again, see my 28mm comparison for colors compared to the Leica colors. Leica colors are definitely cooler. In terms of lens flare, normally you don't see much lens flare from normal use. However, if you do point it at the sun, you can get some lens flare. Sun stars, I was stopping the lens down. You can get like a bit of a smeary spread of sun starness, but definitely not crisp sun stars, which is probably common for vintage lenses. Coma is not something I normally talk about. You do get strong coma at the edges because of the, the heavy fall off. Okay, let's now look at some sample photos. If you saw my Jupiter 12 video, Thid 5 2.8, I was shoot, testing that lens and shooting that lens in the same position as I am here. This is Warsaw and the weather was amazing for the days I was there. So it was really good window for testing many lenses. Here you can see me stopping down. You might want to replay it and you can see the lens improving as you stop the lens down. Um, this is what I do to remind myself of what lens I'm using. I always do like a selfie to show me the lens I'm using on the camera. This is Warsaw Old Town. And just by complete luck, the only day I went was the day that President Biden visited. <laughs> so it was like millions of people wandering around and loads of police and security. Uh, I guess it made for good photos. You can see the quality degrading as the I had to start open the lens to 2.8 in the low light. This is the next day uh, shooting it stop down. It can be really, really sharp and I love this scene. Uh, I took shooting that on film and digital. Um, shooting portraits on the Leica CL. You can see the full video on Patreon. I was shooting all the portraits at f4 and that gave me enough sharpness, uh, kind of edge to edge for, for simple portraits inside. 
Uh, this is another portrait shoot, another new model. If you need presets for these, uh, links below, uh, second link in the description. Uh, she'd never modeled before, so we're just going to do some fun shots. And then I showed her the CL and she's like, oh, I quite like one of those to take on my holidays. <laughs> so she was testing the camera herself, doing lots of selfies, and then I was lighting her to try to give her better photos. <laughs> If you want to get into model photography, download my ebook. It's free and it's first link in the description. These are more real like tourist photos walking around in Warsaw. The black and white ones are with the black and white preset. I think these are with the colour preset. See the fall off at the edge in that colour shot. Then I've had this lens so long. This is when I was in Tenerife last year. And this photo is shot on the SL just to show how it compares on the SL. Okay, and so after seeing those example photos, can I recommend the Canon 28F 2.8? I would say 100% yes, although you may want to get the slightly later F 3.5. I'll come on to alternatives in a second. If you do want to get the Canon 2.8, I had a look on eBay. The prices are slightly higher than they were pre-COVID, but you can pick up this lens currently at £300 to £400, and this is September 2022, if you're watching this video at a later date. Who is this lens best suited to and how would you best use it? If you don't mind heavy vignetting and you don't mind stopping your lens down and you're more interested in center sharpness and edge sharpness, you'll probably like this lens. What are some alternatives? So if you're looking at vintage 28mm lenses, the first one as mentioned is the Canon Serena 28 3.5. That's said to be softer than the 2.8. I think some of the info online says one stop softer. But feel free to let me know below if you've used both and you think differently. The later Canon 28 3.5, which is the one with the black band, that's supposed to be the best of the bunch. And it's sharp at the edges with less fall off. And then if you're looking at other brands, you've got the Lights Hector 28mm 6.3. Then you've got the original Leica Summicron 28 5.6 LTM. You've got the Nikon rangefinder lenses. There's a 28mm. I've got the 35 Nikkor. I'll have to do that in another video. And then if you can find it, you've got the Fed 28mm f4.5. That lens is pretty rare. I've never seen one. And it's also really compact. If you're happy with M-mount, you've got the brand new Leica Summicron 28 5.6, which is now M-mount. But you've also got the affordable TT Artisan 28 5.6. And I really rate this lens. And also, I know if you've got, there's also the 28 Orion 15 lens, the Soviet lens. That lens is the lightest of the bunch of all the ones I've mentioned, and that's my running lens. And if you're using these lenses on a, like a screw mount camera, like a Leica like 2F that I use, you will need a 28mm viewfinder. I use the cheap one, as you can see here, for my smallest, lightest setup. But then I also use a one by Voigtlander if you want to really enjoy my composition, the Brightline finders. They're a bit more expensive and a bit bigger and add a bit of size and weight to your setup. And lastly, as promised, I said I'd share with you the Canon 25mm f3.5. This is an absolute gem of a lens and it's even smaller than the 28 2.8 as I'm showing you here. So here's both lenses side by side. And as you can probably see, the 25mm is even smaller and even more beautiful. To give you a bit of info on the 25mm lens, this is a different optical formula to the 28 so the 25 is actually based on the Zeiss Topogon lens. For me, the 25 had even more fall off than the 28. And so I found, although I loved the size of the 25mm, I was using the 28mm more. The 25mm is even more desirable and probably more rare than the 28. And so you will pay a higher price tag, I'd say probably 500 to 600 pounds. And it weighs only 145 grams. To see how this lens compares to many other 28mm lenses, see my 28mm comparison video, I'll link it at the end, and you'll see the center sharpness, the colors, the contrast, and how it compares to Leica, Voigtlander, and Nikon lenses. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. If you use this lens and have any thoughts, let me know in the description below, and as always, a massive thanks to my patrons.